Hey, it's Lo, and you are tuned in to Wrestling Wind Down, a female-founded and hosted podcast dedicated to professional wrestling and our favorite adult beverage. On this week's episode, I am joined by Britt Waters. She is a multimedia journalist based out of Washington, D.C. We'll be giving our predictions on this weekend's pay-per-views, NXT TakeOver 30, and SummerSlam. And of course, our newest segment, Sip and Tell. So grab your glass of wine. We're going in for the three count. As I mentioned in my intro, I am joined by Britt Waters. I hope you're ready to sip some wine and talk some wrestling. I am so ready. Two of my favorite things. Let's get into NXT. It's going to be a wild show. We have a number one contenders match for the NXT Tag Team Champions. Legato Del Fantasma is going up against Brazongo versus Oni Lorcan. While this match should have a definite winner, I see it going a little bit sideways. Legato Del Fantasma, they've been a really strong force in NXT lately. And Brazango has been there for so long. And they just recently really started having like almost like a serious run. We saw them on SmackDown for all those years with the fashion police and these joking segments, but now it seems like they're being taken more seriously in NXT. And then we have Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch, who I think might end up winning this match. I think it's going to be something that we don't expect. Who do you think is going to win this one? I don't know. I always have like two predictions of like who I want to win and who I think is going to win because you don't line up. But in this one, I'm split. It doesn't really matter to me, to be honest. We have the NXT Women's Championship on the line. Io Shirai is defending her Women's Championship against Dakota Kai. Fun fact, this is Shirai's second title defense. So she's been holding on to that title since NXT TakeOver in your house. And she faced off against Tegan Knox for the first defense. And now she's going up against Tegan Knox's ex-best friend, Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai is a strong force. And with Raquel Gonzalez in her corner, who I'm assuming will be there. We haven't seen her lately, but you never know. She might pop up. It might add a little bit of interesting flavor to the mix. Raquel Gonzalez is a strong force in NXT, and she's played almost the bodyguard of Dakota Kai. But Io Shirai should definitely pick up the win here. Like I said, it's only her second title defense, and she's so talented in the ring that I definitely don't see her giving up the title this soon. I hope she retains um, because she does deserve a longer run. And I think there's a lot of stories that can go on with her and they've been, they've been doing a pretty good buildup, but I, I want to see more from her. So I think she's definitely going to retain. And honestly, I don't think this should be a very long match hmm. to be a longer women's match, but I want them to make, continue to make EO look strong. And I think if it goes too long, it's like, mm, okay, she just barely got the win, you know? Also on the card, this one is a little bit controversial. The NXT North American Championship match. It's a ladder match. We have Bronson Reed versus Damian Priest versus Johnny Gargano versus Cameron Grimes versus Velveteen Dream. I'm sure you've seen on Twitter, everyone is very upset about Velveteen Dream even being involved in this match being on the NXT roster still without being suspended after everything that has gone on with the speaking out movement. But he's in this match. Triple H has come out and said that they looked into the matters. There was nothing there. So a lot of people are still hesitant there. But I don't see Velveteen Dream winning this match. I see maybe Johnny Gargano or maybe even Damian Priest winning this match. There's a lot of up and coming stars in this match that we haven't seen before. And that was basically the whole point as to why Keith Lee gave up the NXT North American Championship was to give people opportunities that haven't had an opportunity at a title before. So I'm really looking forward to this match, especially since it's a ladder match. Who do you think is going to pick up the win here? I'm excited too. I really love ladder matches. I think it's so honorable that Keith dropped the belt so we could see this and so there could be more potential. I think Johnny Gargano, I think a lot of people like him. And I feel like, you know, sometimes wins are based off of t-shirt sales. I think it's it's definitely not going to be Velveteen just because of the controversy surrounding him. And I, I feel so conflicted over that. Like I said, I, I'm in Washington, D.C. I live here. I work here. Um, and I, I, it's rarely known that I'm a huge wrestling fan. So whenever I'm out and about, I host for the NBA and WNBA. So we're at games and stuff. I see his parents a lot. So, <gasps> Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, yeah, then didn't see that one coming. So I was hosting a auto show, the auto show I host for Bentley and Aston Martin. 
and I had something wrestling on. I think I was, it was supposed to be wrestling tea. I put my Bentley jacket over it and they were like, oh, what is that shirt you have on? I was like, oh, it's Bianca Belair. And I start talking wrestling and they're just like, you might know my son. I was like, Velveteen Dream is your son? What a bombshell. I was not expecting that. (laughs) Girl, I was at work like, oh my gosh. So this was like, I think it was like February. So before a lot of this was out. So I know how hard he's worked for to get to this point. And I hope that, you know, he would never try to not just be a disgusting person, Mm -hmm. but like lose your whole entire career. I know that he comes from a a really strong family unit and I hope that none of those things are true. And I I understand what, you know, Triple H said had to be said for business purposes. But for me, I think it hurts both parties. It hurts all of the women who, who spoke out and all of the women who might want to potentially speak out, not just against him, but against anyone because they feel like they might not be believed. And it hurts him even if this is completely fabricated and not true because you don't want to be doing matches when people have this cloud hanging over you. I think he should have taken another break and showed us, like if, if Triple H has the confidence that this isn't true, show us that because I'm not fully convinced. <laughs> right. You know, they put out a statement with the NXT UK superstars when they had allegations against them and almost half of their roster is suspended. But uh-huh. the superstars in the United States who have had allegations against them, they're on television. So it's been a very kind of sad situation because of how WWE is handling it. You know, you see one side of it where they're actually, they're handling it correctly. And then the other side, it's it's not being done well. Yeah. Finally, for our main event, we have Keith Lee defending his championship against Karrion Cross. This is the match that I'm looking forward to. Karrion Cross has been such a dominant force in NXT and he's only been there a couple months, but he's made a name for himself and he's faced off against the likes of Tommaso Ciampa, Dominic Dijakovic, the list goes on. But now he's finally getting his title shot against Keith Lee and I'm hoping and I'm praying that Keith Lee does not lose this championship here. I think Keith Lee, he's a strong dominant force just like Karrion Cross, but there's just something about him as champion, his eagerness, he's so positive, he's great in the ring and he's just been doing a great job as champion. I hope and pray that he does not lose his championship that fast. I I 100% agree. I love Keith Lee. Um, I even fell in love with him more in the, what was the, the movie with the baby Kofi? <laughs> it was on Netflix. Oh the rest, God, it was this wrestling movie. It's about this kid. I, I can't think of the name of it. And Keith Lee was in it and he was just like, touched my heart. So I'm conflicted because I'm ready to see him on the main roster. I think a lot of people want him to have a long title reign in NXT for it to mean something. But I think because he won both belts at once, that means something. But I'm really ready for him to go to the main roster. So I'm okay if he drops the belt. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> Don't choke on your wine. <laughs> I was reading that with the new Thunderdome idea that WWE is bringing forward, having fans in the arena, there might be some superstar returns, some new debuts on the main roster. And who knows, they might bring up a couple superstars from NXT that have been really doing well and having that fan support into the main roster. And you might be right. Keith Lee might be one of them. Yeah. But I think it, it has to be done well and done right. If Charlotte can be on three brands, if all these people, he can do both for a little bit, maybe. Right. Or just, or maybe uh, pop up on Raw Underground or something. I don't know. But I want to see more of him. We also have Adam Cole versus Pat McAfee, the work of the month slash months. This has been crazy, but I am here for it. The drama here has been absolutely riveting and They're about to have a match, Pat McAfee's first wrestling match against a former NXT champion. Adam Cole, he's the face here. Wasn't really expecting that, but Pat McAfee, he's rocking it as a heel. He's cut promos. He punted Adam Cole one week, and now they're facing off. I actually see Pat McAfee winning here. I think they might try to push Adam Cole onto the main roster, but I don't know how that would work because of the Undisputed Era. And I brought this up a couple weeks ago. Are they going to split the Undisputed Era or are they going to keep them all together? You know, we really don't have any major factions other than Retribution and the New Day right now. And the New Day is kind of on a pause. So they might be bringing up a new faction to face off against Retribution. You think Undisputed Era could be Retribution? You know, (laughs) I don't, I don't think so. I've seen women yeah. in the Retribution crew that comes around, and they do switch out people once in a while. I've noticed women with curly hair, women with straight hair, highlights, whatever. And 
I don't think it's Undisputed Era. I think Undisputed Era will have a debut on the main roster, kind of like how they had it in NXT. They'll attack a huge champion that no one expects, like they did with Drew McIntyre, and then they'll go from there. That's what they're known for. They're known for being sly, but very cunning in the ring. I love that you love this match, too. I was not expecting that. Um, (laughs) People are, like, really mad. But I love when wrestling breaks into pop culture and breaks into the sports world because my friends that don't watch wrestling, I can finally talk to them about it. So I get excited about that. But I don't want Pat to win because that's uh, like, first of all, I feel like it's weird that Adam Cole is like a baby face when like this whole thing started off him being like angry and throwing stuff. I'm like, this it's weird. But like, I don't want him to win because I don't like people coming in from outside of our world and looking at to have a triumph over some of the best of the best that we have to offer. I feel like that just kind of like, it makes wrestling look bad. You know, I can agree with you on that. I was also thinking that earlier with, you know, the MMA superstars that have come in before the celebrities that have come in, like Gronk, and they've been able to dominate whole championships. But it's always been weird to fans because that's not their world. They're coming from a separate entity in sports and they're coming into wrestling, making it look like anyone can do it. And, you know, that's not really the case. But I read something earlier that he said he's always wanted to do professional wrestling. So it makes me almost wonder, is he going to transition and become an NXT superstar? We know he's done commentary and stuff like that. Is he thinking about coming into WWE in a performer capacity? We'll see. We will see. If he wins, he can't leave. (laughs) Let's get into SummerSlam. That's happening on Sunday. This card is very packed. Let's start out with Mandy Rose versus Sonya Deville, this hair versus hair match. I almost think that they should hold off on this match. I don't know if you've read, but earlier this week or last week, a very crazed fan broke into Sonya Deville's house and she went to court this week. She's very distraught. And I read in the court case that there was a friend of hers in the house at the time that she escaped with. It was Mandy Rose. Of course, Mandy Rose. (laughs) I think if WWE was looking at it for their performers well-being, they would hold on it. But it's still on the card as of now. I think if they do go forward with this match, Mandy Rose is going to pick up the win. I do not see Mandy Rose shaving her head, going bald at this point. We know she already cut her hair. Well, Sonya cut her hair. But I think Sonya would lose this match because her being shaved bald in the middle of the ring might set a statement. When I think back to Molly Holly, remember she shaved her head because she wanted that moment. And I think it's time for Sonya to have her moment. I don't think nobody's head's getting shaved. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, let's be honest. Like, I think it's, it's Sonya's time to actually dominate and actually show her skills. It's been her time. She's been skipped over so many times. And I think Mandy has this huge, like a boost from Otis So I think this is the time for Sonya to pick up a win. I also think it's the time for her to look like how she's looked this whole time. I think it's, it's not a time for her to have a new look. So I don't think that that works for her. I do see like Mandy losing Otis coming and getting his head shaved. Oh my God. (laughs) And then like they say they shave her head and then she just like takes a wig off or something. Like, I feel like they're going to play with us with this. But I could be completely wrong. I just kind of make up random things. But I just hope that they do not, 100% do not use the tragedy in some type of story. Because that will make me have to stop watching for a while. (laughs) Because I don't want that to ever promote people from, like, harming superstars in hopes of getting worked into a storyline. So I've heard that rumor going around. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope not either. This has been such a tragedy and reading everything, seeing the videos that have come out. It's been insane. And I really hope that Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville are doing okay because that's such a traumatic situation to be involved in. Yeah, I agree. The Raw Tag Team Championships are up for grabs. We have the Street Profits defending their championships against Andrade and Angel Garza. This has been very drama-filled. We have seen Zelina Vega involved. We've seen Bianca Belair involved. We've seen Montez Ford poisoned. It's been very dramatic. It's like a telenovela over here. But I think the Street Profits are going to retain. I've said it before. I think their team is so talented, but... They've been caught in a lot of nonsense. They were caught in nonsense with the Viking Raiders. They were caught in nonsense with Andrade and Angel Garza now. Let's give them a strong title run without the nonsense. Cut it all out. Let's have Bianca involved. I think it's been interesting seeing the women get involved, having their own matches. But 
at the same time, Bianca also needs to be doing, you know, her own thing as well. I love it. I would love Bianca as a manager, even though she's so skilled in ring. Um, I don't like seeing her like have matches with Zelina. That's just so mismatched to me. I'm not with it. I hope the Street Profits definitely retain because Angel Garza and Andrade aren't even a real tag team. There's so much foolishness going around, like, you know, how they, like, congratulated Angel Garza on his real-life wedding and now has him chasing some bachelorette girl. Like, every <laughs> a rando on one of, like, our programming, I get so offended. I'm like, you have a whole roster full of women who want to be on TV. One of them can pretend to like Angel Garza. Or even, like, how Charlie Caruso was kind of it. I was right. like, I need this bachelorette random girl. I'm like, please. Please do not let people get clout from WWE. If anyone's getting clout from WWE, it needs to be WWE wrestlers. Like, can we do that? I don't know. I just hate it. So, yes, Street Profits all the way. United States Championship is also up for grabs. We have Apollo Crews, who was finally crowned the real United States Champion, going up against MVP. And this is their, their second or third match. And I don't know. I think MVP might pick up the win here. I think he has a strong unit behind him with the Hurt Business, which includes Bobby Lashley and Shelton Benjamin, two former champions of their, in their own right. But I think MVP, first of all, he just signed a new deal, multi-year deal with WWE. I don't see him just being in a managerial position. He's had so much experience. He's been there for so long, in and out, of course, but I think it's MVP's time. We've seen him going back and forth. He brought in the new United States Championship, so it just makes sense to have him hold the title. But Apollo Crews has had such a strong run as of late. Don't you think he's been yes. very strong in the ring? And he's had his moment. And I would like to see Apollo Crews go against someone else at this point, just because it seems like it's been very repetitive with them. If they want to go with the storyline, great. But give us some other superstars. Does Apollo have any people in his corner? Maybe a six-person tag. I have a wild theory here. Okay. I'm here I for it. MVP is going to win because Cedric Alexander is going to interfere and then join the Hurt Business. So I feel like that's possible. Like, I want MVP around. I think he's TV gold. I don't necessarily want to see him wrestle that often. <laughs> So I don't want him to hold the belt, honestly, because I'm like, I don't really want to see him wrestle, to be honest. I like how he, I like him as a manager. I want him to see him pop in and do things, but like not full time holding a belt. But I think he will and then pass to someone else in the Hurt Business. But yeah, I think I'm ready for it. Poor Apollo. <laughs> I know, you know, with the last championship defense they were supposed to have, he was out and it was rumored that he might have had coronavirus which, you know, a lot of people online were saying that during the pay-per-view, no one knew what was going on because they thought that they were going to have this United States Championship match and then it just didn't happen. So if Apollo does lose this championship, I hope that he's still involved somewhere. You know, we've seen other superstars. I think of Ali, you know, he's such a strong superstar, but he hasn't been being utilized properly. And a lot of people have been frustrated online. I've seen some comments with him. And I don't know. I hope that Apollo doesn't become like Ali is because they're both very talented and they definitely should be utilized. Take Apollo, Ali, Ricochet and put them against the Hurt Business and actually give us stories from it. Not like, ooh, I don't like you. Ooh, you were mean to my friend. Like, build an actual story that makes us committed and sucked in like we are with every other thing. For the SmackDown Women's Championship, we have Bailey defending her championship against Asuka. How are you feeling about this one? I want to hear your thoughts before I give mine. Is there no brand split? Like, what? <laughs> Why is Asuka there? Asuka won that triple brand battle royal last week on SmackDown. And it had everyone from Bianca Belair to NXT talent to Naomi, who I thought was going to win. And they gave it to Asuka, which I think was an interesting choice. I think they're trying to boost up Asuka to show that she is a strong competitor, which I feel like almost everyone already knows. But hey, they're putting her in this match and... I think she's going to lose this one, unfortunately. I think Bailey has had a really strong run. Her and Sasha have been really almost the faces of the women's roster at this point. And Bailey's character as a heel, I feel like she's developing into a strong heel. You know, when Bailey first started, she was this clean cut baby face. Everyone thought she would never turn heel. And then finally she did. And it, everyone was shocked. New hair. She's molly whopping her Bailey buddies on top of the stage. But 
you know, she's with Sasha. They're doing a really good job. I don't see Asuka picking up the SmackDown Women's Championship, but she might pick up that Raw Women's Championship against Sasha Banks. Um, Asuka has to win at least one or she's completely buried. That doesn't make any sense. And I, I would rather her be and win the, the Raw one than the SmackDown one because I feel like I like her on Raw. I feel like Raw needs Asuka. But I'm so tired of Bailey holding the SmackDown Women's Championship. It feels like it's been eight years. Like, give it to Sonya Deville. Give it to someone else. Get Naomi in the mix. Like, I'm so over her. So completely over her. So I wish there was another way for her to drop the belt. But, like, I don't. I think Bailey's going to win. But I think they're going into this eventual Sasha versus Bailey match. They wanted to do it at SummerSlam, I think. And with everything going on with coronavirus, no crowd, everything like that, I think they pushed it back a little. And they're hoping to have this match between Sasha and Bailey in a, a crowd. And I think that's what they're really waiting on. I think Sasha's going to lose here and she's going to start eyeing Bailey's SmackDown Women's Championship. We saw how she eyed it before. And I, I, Highly doubt that they're going to take Sasha out of the picture now, even though I wish that they would have Naomi in the mix. I've said it. The internet has said it. Naomi deserves better. And she's such a talented superstar that WWE seems to not understand. She comes out to the ring. Her entrance is one of a kind. There's been absolutely nothing else like it. And she's a star performer. We've seen it in tag team. We've seen it in singles. She can do it. But WWE has not given her an opportunity to hold that title for three years now. I think I I love Naomi. She's my favorite. Super fave. I have a Uso shirt on because I like her. Um, (laughs) I think she deserves so much better, but it doesn't have to be a title run. Like if they just put the actual energy and storytelling into it, like we're seeing so many women spotlighted and on TV consistently and having it make sense without a title. Like, eventually, yes, I want to see Sonya with the title. I want to see Mandy get something. But, like, I love that we have this story and these big matches with them without a title belt. I think that Naomi needs to be in the mix, but maybe not for the title right now. But, yeah, she needs a better story than, like, I don't like Lacey Evans. Yeah, I think that's what they were trying to go for with Lacey Evans and Naomi, and they got a lot of backlash online with them discussing Naomi's hair and being inappropriate like that. So I think that's when they were like, okay, we need to stop this and – they didn't know how else to utilize her. Hopefully they have something else for her once SummerSlam is up. New storylines, new beginnings, and hopefully she's a part of it. Yeah, 100%. Seth Rollins is facing off against Dominic Mysterio in a street fight. And Rey Mysterio is going to be ringside with his one eye after this eye for an eye match that he had with Seth Rollins, which yeah, it doesn't make me shake my head. Up, like, then he messed up both the eyes, and then the one eye still won't heal. I'm like confused. It's a different eye every day. He could clearly see through it. I'm like, what's going on? Like, what? Uh-uh. Who do you think is going to win this match? That's I think wrong. there's, I think there's wrong. going to be a lot of outside involvement with Rey Mysterio, maybe Buddy Murphy in the mix. But hopefully we get a clean cut winner. I mean, I heard you say Seth Rollins. Why do you think he's going to win? Seth Rollins is the top of his game. Can you imagine what these shows would be like without the Monday Night Messiah? Like, oh my goodness. And eventually, when we probably hopefully do get fans back, he's going to take a break too. You know, he's expecting a baby in what, December? So, probably, yeah. Like, keep riding the Seth Rollins wave. You, and, and I don't like, you cannot have a superstar lose to someone in their first match ever. Either I want Seth Rollins to win or I want Rey Mysterio to win. And Ray just steps in and he's like, okay, I'm not going to watch you. I'm not going to sit here and watch you dog out my son. Let's fight. And then Ray Mysterio wins. I'll be okay with that. If Dominic wins, I'm so annoyed. <laughs> but like in my imaginary head, what I really want to happen is like Dominic to join the little Monday Night Messiah crew. I would love to see that. That would be jaw dropping. I did read online that Dominic is actually thinking about going under the nickname of Prince Mysterio. And I guess him and Ray had an interview recently and he said that he has his ring gear design. He's going to be under a mask. He wants to continue that legacy that his father, Ray Mysterio has put for it, which I think is pretty cool. And they won't be doing it during this match. I think they want to wait until this whole thing is over and then kind of go into it. Yeah, I think this match is not really Seth Rollins versus Dominic Mysterio. It's Seth Rollins versus 
Rey Mysterio's son. I think he's still wrestling as Rey Mysterio's son. And he should say whatever he wants his name and gimmick to be for when he breaks out of that mold. It's like, no, this is how I feel. I'm not fighting for my father. I'm fighting for me. The Universal Championship is on the line. Braun Strowman is defending against The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, and Alexa Bliss has to be involved here somehow. We've seen her involvement on SmackDown. We saw her involvement at the last pay-per-view. And... (laughs) Maybe they might have a rematch at Payback. That's what I was reading about. They might get involved there, too. It might be one of those ones that just keep going. But who do you think is going to win here? I really don't know this one. I really don't know. I mean, like, you can't have The Fiend lose with so many times. Um, And then, like, I feel like Braun has more potential to go after other people. And I would like to see The Fiend kind of just, like, focus on the fun house and maybe bring some more people into the fun house and develop a story to where we believe it again. But I don't really know who's going to win, to be honest. I just want to see if, if Bliss comes out as Sister Abigail because I'm so tired of the Sister Abigail rumors. Like, oh, it's Liv. It's Carmella. I'm like, oh my gosh, enough already. Carmella? <laughs> yes. I have not heard that one before. <laughs> Wouldn't that be interesting? That would be terrible. <laughs> I think The Fiend might win here. And the only reason why I think that is because Braun Strowman has been holding this championship for a while now. Since WrestleMania, when everything happened where Roman Reigns was not involved, he decided to stay home. He's still at home. And honestly, it really hasn't been a historic title run for Braun Strowman. I think they needed someone to put the title on. It wasn't going to be Roman, so they went with Braun Strowman. And they've had him involved, you know, with The Fiend, and they've had him involved with other superstars. But it hasn't been a historic run, in my opinion. And I almost think that they should have left the title on The Fiend when he had it before. He's been such a captivating character in the WWE, and people tune in to watch him. And I honestly can't say the same about Braun Strowman. I There might be some people that tune in to see Braun, but I feel like he hasn't been captivating recently with everything going on with him how holding the title i mean i don't think Swamp match braun is different he is the monster now he is turning heel i want to see him dominate the roster and i feel like he kind of needs the belt to do that but then again he doesn't like i said i'm gonna watch your match regardless whether it's for a title or not i'm excited to see him switch over to being a heel and if that means him losing the belt the fiend is a good person to take it Finally, the WWE Championship is on the line. Drew McIntyre is defending his title against Randy Orton. I think it's going to be a clean sweep for Drew McIntyre. He's had a really, really, really strong run, and he's been really captivating with the fans because he's just so personable, and he's been cutting really good promos. He's had really good matches as champion, but Randy Orton is a really strong competitor. We've seen Randy Orton have Ric Flair in his corner, and Randy Orton has, was going up against Edge at one point. And while Randy Orton has been strong as of late, you know, I think about the last couple of years, he's kind of been lost in the shuffle on SmackDown. He wasn't really going for a title. Now he's on Raw. And, you know, this is a big opportunity for him. I was reading earlier that he wants to tie Ric Flair's record and go up against John Cena. And I think that would be a good idea. And then he was saying that after that, after they face off, the two can retire, both him and Cena. No way. Yes, I read that online earlier. Please don't talk that into existence. No, 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 no. Randy Orton needs to wrestle until, like, he's Ric Flair's age. Like, he just needs to keep going. I don't care. Like, he can't. I'm I'm over John Cena. He's got the whole, like, movie stuff. I love Cena. I don't need to see him wrestle anymore. I need to keep seeing Randy Orton wrestle because he's been saving TV during the pandemic. So Alex McCartney said, Randy Orton says in three or four years, he wants to be tied on 16 world title runs with John Cena, who would be heel and have Ric Flair in his corner, and they face off at WrestleMania to see who gets the record number 17, and they both have to retire. Um, yeah, no. (laughs) (laughs) Not for me. Who do you think is winning this match in particular? Do you think Drew McIntyre is going to hold on to his championship for the time being, or do you see Randy Orton coming in and picking up the title? I see Drew McIntyre retaining, and And then I think it's just because of what's going on. Like, my heart broke for him that this was the circumstances of his mania win. Agreed. So I think I would love to see him get fans, even if it's virtual fans in the Thunderdome. He deserves that pop to keep the belt here. And Randy does not need a belt to be great. He has been the main event of, like, a ton of episodes of Raw with no belt. He is sports entertainment himself. Like, I I mean, come on. Like, I'm just... Is doing too much for Randy Orton at this point. So, like, <laughs> I just feel like he doesn't need it. 
What do you think? Uh, I think Drew McIntyre is going to retain here. You know, like I said, I think he has had a strong run, but like you said, he didn't have the pop that he needed at WrestleMania. And now having the Thunderdome, I don't know the specifics, so I don't know if they're going to mute everyone. I don't know if they're going to have the sound on. If they have the sound on, it might be a little bit dangerous because you know how fans are. So we'll see how it goes. But if they do have the sound on, I think it would add that interesting element that we are missing from having a live crowd there, you know, having those reactions, those pops. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I wish there was some, like, cool stipulations, though. Like, because I feel like I've seen them both wrestle very well. We know their talent. And I wish this was, like, a more exciting match. Like, especially because of what we're dealing with right now, with, like, we can't go. So do some fun stuff. Like, go outside. I don't know. Bring back the uh, the stretcher matches, the I quit matches. Like, bring back some stuff that I'm excited about. Not just to see you guys both wrestle. I know you guys do it well, but, like, I want to see up the ante a little bit. Hey, they might face off at Payback, which is like a couple weeks away. So that might be what they're building towards. Maybe they're going to introduce some new exciting matches there. But I don't see this being the end of Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre. I think they probably will continue into like a series of matches. And then maybe Randy Orton might pick up that title sooner or later. But I don't think it should be on the first try. Yeah. Let's get into our newest segment, Sip and Tell. This week, it was revealed that Renee Young is leaving WWE. I'm so sad. I'm very sad. I think everyone knows that we are huge fans of Renee Young. She has been such a legendary character in the WWE, the first female commentator in history. She's been backstage interviewing. She's been doing so much. She was on backstage the show. Um, She was on Talking Smack. She's done so much in her time in WWE, but it was reported this week that she did give her notice and she will be done after SummerSlam weekend, so very, very soon. She was actually under two contracts. So she had a contract with the WWE, and then she also had a contract with Fox for the WWE Backstage show. But since that show was canceled, she was only working under one contract, which means that she has no lingering obligations to leave the company. As we know, whenever someone announces that they're leaving the WWE, people assume that they're going to AEW. We know she's married to John Moxley, He was a former WWE superstar, and there's been a lot of speculation about her going there and doing interviewing or commentary, and there's also been rumors that she might go into bigger sports, which would make more sense. You know, she has experience now with Fox, a lot of commentary work up in Canada as well, so I don't see her going to AEW. I think Renee Young is capable of so much more. Um, We also know she is having a cookbook. I hope if she needs any wine pairing, she knows where to come. Um... But this news is just so sad, and it was very heartwarming to see the fans online saying so many positive things about her. You know, I think about a lot of other superstars that have been released, and I've never seen a lot of positivity when someone is released. A lot of people like to dig up old skeletons and stuff, but everyone has something positive to say about Renee. A hundred percent. When I saw this, I was sad because of my own selfish reasons, but I was also so excited for her. Um... You know, I've been a broadcaster for 10 years. So I know that like you, when you, you feel stuck when you do the same thing for a long time <laughs> and she's been doing this for a long time. There was rumors that ESPN wanted her years ago and she wanted to stay and, and keep going with wrestling. I think it would almost be a demotion for her because even though I'm a huge AW fan, I've traveled to go shows with them. It feels like that's not the, a lateral move for her. I would love to see her host a cooking show. Just see what other things she likes. You know, she shut down one of the rumors on Twitter that she was pregnant. So I think there's a lot of career moves that she can make. And I don't want to see her in AEW. But if she ends up there, I'll be okay. Thank you, Britt, for joining me today on Wrestling Wind Down. Where can the people find you on social media? You can follow me at It's Britt Waters. It's I-T-S-B-R-I-T-T-W-A-T-E-R-S. And that's my social media on all of them. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all of that. I love to talk wrestling. And thank you for having me. And thank you for doing this. I love that there's so many outlets where we can just hear people talk about things that we love, and especially for it to be a female voice. Like, I love this show. 
Hey guys, just wanted to hop on here before the episode officially ends and let you know that we are being taken over this weekend. The Rest Friends podcast will be taking over our Instagram stories tomorrow in honor of NXT TakeOver 30. And then on Sunday, I'll be taking over the Rest Friends podcast Instagram stories in honor of WWE SummerSlam. So join us. Our Instagram page is at WWDCAST and the Rest Friends podcast Instagram page is at WRESTFRI. I-E-N-D-S. Talk to you soon. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Wrestling Wind Down. You can find all of our other episodes available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and wherever else you listen to your podcast. We're also on Twitter and Instagram at WWDCAST. Our new website is also coming soon. Let us know what you thought about the episode. What was your favorite part? We upload episodes with brand new co-hosts every week. Until next time, enjoy your wine, and of course, enjoy your wrestling. Cheers! Cheers.